Hi everyone. I'm just going to be taking you through how to create your stencil using the Pixlr photo editor. So as you would have seen from class today, we would have installed our Pixlr editor through our Google Chrome apps. Now all we need to do is define an image. So Just going to pick a picture of a celebrity, someone that's fairly famous, and just going to go with this one here. A really cool function in Pixlr is that you can actually copy the URL in which the picture is from. So hover over it, right click or two finger tap, go to copy image URL. Go back to Pixlr and under this one here, open image from URL, simply paste that in, press OK and your image will come up. So the basic things that we have to do are to make your image black and white it has to be simple areas of black, simple areas of white with no gray whatsoever. And this is the way in which we are going to do it. Just keeping in mind as well too, everybody's image is going to be slightly different. So don't think that this method is going to work for every single one. There will be some variations depending on your image. Okay, on the left hand side is your toolbar. On the right hand side you will see a few navigation tools, you'll see a navigator which takes you around the image, different layers which we probably won't get into uh, for this tutorial and also a history button as well too, much like your internet history, it will track every click um, and every tool in which you have used for your pixel session this time around. Alright, let's go up to uh, adjustment bar. So we need to firstly make our photo black and white, which we're going to hit the desaturate button, turn it black and white. We are then going to go to brightness and contrast. And we're going to have a play around with this to make it a little bit darker, but not too dark. All right, pretty happy with that. Press OK. Next, we are going to go to this one here called Curves. We're going to drag it from the middle, click once, and drag it up. And we don't want to lose all the detail. So for this one, I might not drag it that far up. I might just sort of leave it here. Press OK. I'm going to go back to that function again, but this time my curve is going to go downwards. And as you can see, when it goes downwards, it becomes darker and eliminates a lot of the detail. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now, our main problem is that there's still a lot of gray in there. So, what we can do is back to adjustment, we're going to go to the levels option and we're going to muck around with these little tabs here that will adjust our levels. This one here is black, this one is grey and this one is white. So at the moment we're going to look at reducing the grey, amping up the white and also amping up the black as well too. Jump with the two at the bottom, but I find that sometimes they don't make much of a difference. OK, 
Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna press OK. Now that's the basics of it done. Here's the last part in which involves a little bit of tidying up. As you can see, there are a lot of black specks still floating around the place, loose strands in her hair, um, and a couple of untidy lines just around her face and around her mouth and around her eyes. So this tidy up process now involves you as the artist to go through and to separate the black and the white areas. So what you will need to ensure is that all the white areas on your artwork join together and all the black areas can be floating or separate. And you can do this out of one arm uh, with two methods, either using the rubber or either using the paintbrush tool. I'm going to use the rubber first. I'm going to pick a rubber, which is a little bit smaller, a little bit too small. And I'm going to start rubbing out some of the messy specks on the side maybe even make it a little bit bigger and I'm going to rub out some of these bits in her hair just to tidy it up Remember at this stage, it's really up to you as to what detail you want to keep and what you don't want to keep. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that so far. Um, I'm gonna now change over to my paintbrush and I'm gonna start filling in some of the dark areas here. As you can see, there are parts that are broken, so it's really up to you as to how you're gonna connect them or disconnect them, I guess. So like this white chunk here in her hair, I would probably just color in black. If it looks a bit strange, you might wanna undo it. Use your rubber tool, connect it, Once again, it's really up to you. I think it actually looks a little bit better. With it filled in. So let's do that instead. Remember, you can adjust the size of your brush as well, too. So like I said before, the black and white areas are really up to you as to what you're going to keep and what you're not going to keep, depending on how weird the image might look. So I might get rid of these parts. Might just get rid of this little bit here, tidy it up. Just a little bit around her mouth.
Oops. Okay, and that about wraps it up. That is just, once again, that's just a quick once over. Obviously, you'll be spending a little bit more time on your one. Um, when you finish as well too, please make sure that you go to layer, that you flatten the image. That just gets rid of all the unnecessary bits and pieces. Go to file, save it. You can also save it to a Pixlr library, online library as well too, um, but you'd have to create an account. So I would just probably save it to my computer, give it an appropriate title, hit OK, and you're done. If you have any questions, feel free to ask your classroom teacher. Thanks for watching.